That is right everybody, today at the Galactic Armory, we finally find the way. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make your own Mandalorian helmet, as seen in the TV show The Mandalorian. Now this helmet was probably one of my most frustrating builds. I tried so many different techniques to get this helmet to look right. There's a lot of work that went into this helmet, but I think the results speak for themselves. So let's get right into this build. The files we'll be using today come from my own website, galacticarmory.net. So check that out if you want to find the 3D files. I made it as accurate as I could get so we have a good base model to work with. Now I printed this helmet in some beautiful looking silk silver PLA. It doesn't really matter what color you print the helmet in since we're going to be painting over it all anyway. But I thought this one just looked really nice for photos. Now if you don't have access to a 3D printer, I do sell the raw prints that we start with in my shop online. So if you want to help support the channel as well as complete this project, be sure and check that out check out this beautiful looking print. I think it turned out great. Now, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do to this helmet is reinforce it. And we're gonna wanna do that with some fiberglass resin. Due to the design of the Mandalorian helmet, the cheeks on either side of the face are kind of wobbly. They kind of hang out there on their own. And we obviously don't want any damage to the helmet. So we're gonna be adding this fiberglass resin to help reinforce it and make it stronger. Now this resin comes as a two-part mixture. One is like your base resin, and the other one is a liquid hardener. Now this stuff is pretty messy, so the first thing that we do is add some tape to the visor to try and keep all the liquid fiberglass inside the helmet so none of it drips out and makes a mess everywhere. So we're actually gonna be using the lid of the container to store our resin in. Just pour some in, add about 15 to 20 drops of the liquid hardener, and then I just stir it together with the stick I found on the ground. Once they're pretty thoroughly mixed, we can pour some of the resin in and then brush it in place with a very cheap chip brush. I say really cheap, you don't want to spend more than a dollar on this paintbrush because it is going to be literally unusable after, after we're finished. So I paint the resin onto the cheeks of the helmet to help reinforce it, as well as the top dome of the helmet just to give it some weight and some heft. Gotta wait a couple of hours for this resin to cure. Once it does, it'll be pretty solid stuff. So that should help reinforce our helmet quite a bit. Okay, the time has come for everybody's favorite red toothpaste, Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. This material is gonna help us fill in the 3D printer lines and give us a perfectly smooth finish for painting. Now obviously this stuff is not actually toothpaste. Do not use it to brush your teeth and then sue me. It is mainly used for auto body repair. So that's where you're gonna find this stuff in like a grocery store. What it is, it comes out as a creamy liquid and after it reacts with the air for a few hours, it will harden. At that point, we'll be able to sand it and be left with a smooth finish. So I'm gonna be applying this stuff all over the helmet. We're gonna be rubbing it in with our finger to help it get into the small crevices around the helmet. You absolutely wanna be sure and wear a glove as well as wear a respirator for this. I should have said you also wear both gloves and respirator for the last part, but this stuff is pretty nasty. So do it in a well-ventilated area and don't touch it with your bare skin. Once we've coated the entire helmet in this stuff, we're gonna let it sit for about four to six hours, let it cure, and then we'll come back to it. So once our Bondo is cured, we can begin the sanding process. Now sanding is definitely the most tedious part of this whole process, so we're gonna do what we can to help speed it up. For that, we're gonna start sanding with a mouse orbital sander. On it, we've got a 120 grit pad of sandpaper. That's pretty rough, so it should help sand down a lot of the Bondo. You definitely want to wear a respirator for this, as well as be outside or in an area you can clean up because it's going to kick up a lot of dust and you don't want to be breathing it in or making a huge mess everywhere. So we're just going to go around the entire helmet with the mouse sander getting as much as we can. We don't have to get everything with it but this should help save your shoulder muscles from all the sanding. Once we've gotten as much as we can we can clean the helmet off. I like to use a leaf blower for it but a microfiber cloth works just as well. Now we'll follow it up with some hand sanding. For the hand sanding, we're just going to grab off a little square of 120 grit sandpaper and sand off the remaining areas that we couldn't reach with the mouse sander. Now, sanding is the most difficult part of this whole process. It's a pain in the butt, takes a long time, and you might not get it totally right the first time. I just want to encourage you guys at this point, if you can make it over this hump, you are well on your way to a beautiful looking helmet. Once we've completely sanded the helmet once, we're going to be adding a new material to help the helmet be even smoother. Now Bondo is great at filling in the large 3D printer lines, but now we've got a lot of tiny scratches around the helmet. To help fill those in, we've got a product called Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Filler and Sandable. This stuff acts like 
thick spray paint, and since it's an aerosol, it's gonna do a great job at getting in the areas that the Bondo couldn't quite reach, as well as filling in the small scratches that we got from our sanding. It's really gonna help our final sanding of the helmet go over really well and give us a smooth surface for painting. I wish I could tell you we were done with the sanding process, but we have only just begun. Now that our filler primer is dried, I wanna go over it again with our 120 grit sandpaper just to complete the first round of smoothing and sanding. Now at this point, odds are there are still some deformities in your helmet, or you can see some 3D printer lines that need a little bit more Bondo and filler primer. So we're gonna keep repeating those two steps until we are happy with the finish of our helmet. We're gonna add a little bit more Bondo in some places that need more work. We don't have to go over the entire helmet again, but we're gonna need to add some more Bondo to some of those troubled areas. Same with the filler primer. After we've added the Bondo, we're gonna sand it down, add more filler primer, sand it down, maybe add more Bondo, sand it down, you guys get the idea. We're gonna keep going with that process until we are perfectly happy with our smooth helmet. Once you are happy with the helmet, we'll be able to sand it down for the final few times. Before we get to the final sanding, I wanna show you guys something that you might encounter as well. Throughout the filling process, we've accidentally filled in some of the detail lines, like on the mohawk. Those are kind of important. They, it is important that those are well-defined and you can see them in the final helmet. So what I've done is I've stolen this little pick tool from our bathroom and we're gonna use it to dig out the Bondo and filler primer that found its way into those detail lines. The material's pretty easy to push out if you just make sure that you stay aligned. So we're gonna do this to the entire Mohawk to make sure that you can see those detail lines. Now that we've got that done, we can move on to the final round of sanding. We're gonna start the final round of sanding with a 320 grit sanding sponge, going around the entire helmet, sanding down every detail. It should feel a lot smoother now. Once we're done with that, we're gonna increase the grit of sandpaper again to make the helmet even more smooth. From 320 grit, we're gonna jump up to 400 grit, again, going over the entire helmet, making it all smooth again. From 400, we jump up to 600, and then from 600, we jump up to 1000 grit. This grit of sandpaper is extremely fine and should give us a perfectly smooth surface for painting. So painting this helmet is where the real headaches began to set in. The Mandalorian helmet has a very unique paint job. It is like a dark chrome and it seems to change with the lighting that it's in. Now, if you wanted to use the same paint as the one the show uses, it's called a Luma Luster. Unfortunately, this paint is like $400 for, I don't know, a couple pints. It is not cheap. So I wanted to go with an option that was a bit more affordable. And I've seen some great looking Mandalorian helmets that used a technique called graphite rubbing. Now basically what this is, you take very fine graphite powder and rub it over the entire helmet. Once this graphite has been smoothed over the helmet, it becomes reflective and gives a pretty good look. Now in all the helmets that I saw, they used a black base coat. I wanted to try it out with some different base coats just to see if I could maybe lighten up the graphite a little bit. I tried it with a white base coat. And didn't really care for how that turned out. It turned out a bit too light. So then I went to a black base coat and I thought that turned out pretty well. The drawback to using a graphite rub is that it is extremely delicate. I mean, if you touch this thing with your fingers, you're gonna smudge the graphite and it's gonna lose its shine almost immediately. So if you're making this helmet as a display piece, a graphite rub might be the best bet. I am not, however. I wanna actually hold this thing and put it on my head. I tried to seal the graphite powder with a uh, workable fixative. It's a aerosol that artists actually use, like pencil artists use to preserve their pencil drawings so that they don't smudge it while they're continuing to work on it. Unfortunately, this dulled the shine of the helmet quite considerably. So you can make the helmet look pretty cool with the graphite, but you can't really touch it or seal it or protect it in any way. So I wanted to look at other options. Eventually, I came back to using an airbrush. Now I've worked with chrome and airbrushes before. It's been a while, I'll admit, but I figured this was the best way to get the finish that I wanted and it has ways to protect the paint. So after many failed attempts at getting the perfect finish, here's the process I used to get the helmet that you saw at the beginning of the video. 
So the paint that I used in my airbrush is called Spastix Mirror Chrome. You can get this paint for less than $20 on Amazon. So it's a lot better than uh, $400 in my opinion. Now you can see me here testing out the paint on some spoons. Now spoons are a great way to test the finish of paint that's not on your helmet. You know, just add some primer. We're gonna add a black gloss base coat underneath the chrome and the spoon is already smooth so you don't have to worry about sanding any pieces. And you can get them in packs of 48. So very helpful stuff. Great to practice on before you move to your helmet. I was working out a distance of the airbrush that I liked as well as like a an amount of paint that I liked. After I had tested all the spoons, I moved on to the helmet. And you can also see that we gave our helmet a gloss black base coat, just like the spoons. It really brings out the shine in the chrome paint. So I definitely recommend you do that as well. I painted this in light coats, just going around the entire helmet. And as you can see, it gave it quite the beautiful looking shine and it was not too difficult. The biggest benefit of this technique is that we can seal the paint so that we can actually handle it with our fingers and not worry too much about ruining the paint job. Now to seal the paint, we used a product called Alclad Clear Coat. I tried this as well as the Alclad Aqua Gloss, which was recommended to use on the chrome, but I actually found that this clear coat worked better and didn't dull the chrome as much, so, so I went with this instead. You definitely wanna do light coats on this. If you do too much, it's going to definitely dull the chrome, but you wanna do enough coats that it's actually effective. So I went around the helmet just a couple times with this clear coat, and then I think I let it set and cure for at least 24 hours. It was probably more like two days before I came back to it. So now that we've coated our helmet, it should be safe to handle with our fingers and hands so that we can move on to the visor. So no Mandalorian helmet is complete without the visor. Face shields are a little hard to come by right now, so I think this is actually a green tinted one, but I added some black window tint to it, and now it's completely black. Should work just fine for us. The first thing we want to do is figure out the size of the visor that we need. So with that, I've just got a sheet of paper. I'm going to trace the outline of the opening with it with Sharpie, and that should give us a pretty rough outline of the size of the visor that we need to cut out. We need to cut it pretty close to the trace that we made so that it fits inside the helmet pretty well. If it's too big, it won't want to bend properly and it will have a harder time securing it. So now that we've got the visor cut out to shape, we're going to need to attach it to the helmet. For that, lately I've been using this product called Steel Stick. It's like a, a two-part putty that when rubbed together, it is workable putty for a few minutes, but then it'll start to harden and eventually it'll be like rock solid. So it does a great job at holding the visor in place compared to something like glue or tape. I found that this is a great way to hold the visor in place. You see I took the putty and split it up in just a few pieces, adding the putty to a few pivotal areas of the visor, making sure that it stays in place. And I'll just hold it there for a few minutes while the putty hardens. And after a few minutes, it should be completely hard. You can let it go and the visor should stay in place. Now this is something new I'm trying out on my helmets. You can kind of see it here, but the helmet kind of sits a little bit low. It's almost touching my shoulders and my head can move around in it pretty freely. So what I'm gonna be adding to the inside of the helmet are these custom pads. Now these pads I found on Amazon, they're for like motorcycle helmets but they've got a Velcro sticky side and then the pad side. So you can stick some Velcro on the inside and then attach these pads to the inside as well to give your helmet some volume and to help fit the helmet better. These pads are really easy to apply. I just added one to the top, to the sides, gave it a try on, see what other places needed some more padding and just installed them as I saw fit. This really makes the helmet fit a lot better and is definitely something I'd like to add to all my future helmets that I intend to wear. There you go guys, that is how I found the way and how you too can also find the way. I'm really looking forward to the season two of The Mandalorian and I'm debating if I wanna make my own Mandalorian armor similar to how I made the Clone Trooper armor. So let me know what you guys think. I wanna thank you all for watching. Remember to check out galacticarmory.net for the files or the raw 3D prints. I wanna thank my supporters on Patreon for their continued support. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again in the next one. I have spoken.